Okay, happy Friday night, you guys. It is time for the virtual paint and sip. Um, simple sunflowers tonight. So, as you are joining, say hello. Um, I am getting the right angle on this canvas. So, I'm going to maybe tilt this a little bit so you guys can see better. If you are painting along with me, grab your canvas. It doesn't have to be huge. This is a, what is this? This is a canvas board, and I think it's like a, this looks like an eight by 10, okay? So it doesn't have to be anything huge. You can do huge, absolutely. Um, what you want for this is a rectangular shape. We're gonna go a little bit horizontal. Um, this would probably work on a square, but you'll have to kind of adjust as you see fit. Um, so I decided to go small tonight just to make it unthreatening, unintimidating. Um, <laughs> this is the size of a piece of notebook paper. So that's all that you have to worry about. And I'm going to share this out um, in a couple of places while you guys jump on. No, I don't want to just share it anywhere. I think I just shared it to myself. Let's see. Let's just see. Okay, I shared it to my place. Great. Okay, so um, if you guys are hanging with me, you can either watch or you can paint along. So here is um, kind of the palette of colors that we're using tonight. You do not need a fancy palette thing. You can use a piece of paper. Um, so we've got red, orange. This is called yellow ochre right here. Um, if you are at the paint store and you need an actual color of this like mustardy yellow, it's called ochre, yellow ochre. This is just a bright yellow. Um, you can either mix turquoise or buy turquoise. Either one is fine. There's no shame in just buying the color that you want. If it exists, sometimes it doesn't exist or sometimes it's a little more expensive. So I'll show you how to um, actually mix that in a minute. Black and then a brown and then white in the middle. Okay, so nothing fancy. If you want fancy names of paint colors, I will give them to you. Um, but if you're at Walmart and wanna pick these up, this is all you need, okay? So what we're gonna paint tonight, this is what I'm gonna work from. And again, you don't need a fancy paint thing. I paint all the time. And so I just happen to have a lot of paint supplies. You can put these on a basic sheet of paper, piece of wax paper, that always works good. Um, and the first step, we are going to do is with the red. Okay, we're gonna paint the whole thing red. So get a large-ish brush just to make it fast for yourself, okay? It could be this kind of brush. It could be this kind of brush, okay? It doesn't matter. Your goal is just fast coverage, okay? Um, on the scale of difficulty, this is like a one, okay? I'm keeping this one really simple for you guys. Um, if you want to paint along, okay? So let me move this out of the way so I don't get paint all over me. And I'm gonna hold this because I'm leaning up against a glass jar so you guys can see, all right? And we're just gonna quickly paint the entire thing. Super easy, you cannot mess this up, okay? I need a heavier jar, it's already moving, that's okay. All right, so you're just gonna paint the whole thing. Get the corners. If you're on another canvas, cool. Like a thicker canvas, that's fine. Just paint, paint, paint. And this can feel really meditative. So I tried to get, while you're doing this, while I'm doing this, I tried to get some royalty free music for the background um and i've been told by more than one person that it's absolutely terrible the stuff i found on youtube to which i agree and so i went to facebook like there's like a creative studio um music library that they have and it's actually worse so um we're not doing any music <laughs> i just put on ocean sounds because that's actually better um, than what Facebook has on tap for music. Okay, 
All right, let me get this last corner. By the way, you can always turn your canvas, okay? No shame in turning your canvas. Make it easy on yourself to freaking paint, okay? This should be a relaxing experience. This should not be stressful. This should be easy and calming. If you're stressed out, let's talk. Um, because this should be anxiety releasing for you. Okay, so we've got the whole background done. All right, good, right? Red, yay. Let's see, can you guys see this? I'll get this as much in the frame as I can. I should have gone sideways, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a trick. Instead of like having to wait, and make sure you put your brushes in water. As soon as you're done, tap, tap, tap in the water. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a trick that will help you get your painting done faster if you hate it. Get a hair dryer. Okay, so let's turn this on for a second. If I actually turned it on, on. Okay, so if you have a hair dryer, use it to your benefit. Um, if you don't want to sit around and wait, or go watch an episode of Shit's Creek and then come back, or go get yourself a glass of wine or um, a snack and then come back. Hang on, I'll be right back. I forgot chalk. One second. got a bag of kids chalk this is all you need there's no fancy stuff here all right for just basic painting of fun things you do not need expensive materials okay so for today's creation we are doing um, a simple sunflower so the sunflower is going to be coming out of this corner over here and I'm going to show you kind of how to mark it off so that it fills the canvas in a nice and even fashion, okay? So, which was the reason that I took the hair dryer to my paint, and it's actually not too bad right now, okay? So, and the reason for the drying of the paint is so when you go on there with the chalk and the other colors, it doesn't just like grab the paint, smear around, and make a bigger mess, okay? So, here's what we wanna do. We want, our sunflower let me get my reference photo up here okay you want to go about halfway on this side and about a third of the way on the bottom okay so this is kind of how you measure and then you're just gonna do a half circle and connect those two little marks that you made okay all right so you got your half circle. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to go from the corner up to 
like the middle ish okay estimate it's this does not have to be perfect it's nature um, it's it's there's room for error here you want to take another line and go just a little bit like by the edge and then a little bit by the edge over here okay this is all gonna get covered up in a race so don't even worry about it but these are guidelines okay these are like your anchor marks for your anchor pedals that you're gonna make next okay so what you can do next is come up about halfway to the top okay make a little line there and then almost to the edge over here you can even like use your finger or your paintbrush as a measuring you want to go about the same distance so almost to the edge over here and all i'm doing now is creating for myself i'm doing this as a dotted line because it's not a hard line sorry this is moving this is kind of the guideline for the edge of your petals okay so you've got the middle where the petals are going to start you got some guidelines for where we're going to go the direction and now you've got an edge to reach out to okay so this gives you some structure in what can feel like a really wide and intimidating space okay so now we're going to create some petals because this is a sunflower it's going to be there's going to be lots of petals and lots of detail going on in here and i'm going to show you how to do it step by step it's actually pretty easy okay so first thing we want to do we're going to start with this middle one just to give ourselves a sense of what the heck we're doing if you want to turn your canvas like this because you're better off going straight up and down then do that okay i'm going to do that there's no wrong way to do this okay so if you're thinking about a sunflower there's start down here maybe like a half an inch wide okay use your guideline that's why you made it all right it's gonna go this way you can even make your guideline go all the way out who cares all right chalk erases that's what's great about kids chalk all right go all the way out if you want to and then your petals they're wide in the middle right you can make them a little wider if you want to and then they're skinny at the bottom and skinny at the top and at the top they point point. and if you go beyond this line it's okay all right all right, so there's one petal, all right? Do the same thing on this line down here. If you wanna make the line all the way, awesome, do it. All right, point at the top, fat in the middle, give it a belly, petal belly, and then a little thinner at the bottom, okay? All right, and then do this one over here. And now this one, Keep in mind, this one's going off the page, okay? Because you had your circle over here and we're a little bit taller. So this one's gonna go same width, but it goes off the page there and maybe it goes off the page there, okay? That's okay, that's good. All right, good job. All right, now we're gonna fill in the gaps. So we can probably do one here and fit it in. All right. So do the same thing in there. Don't worry about them being exactly shaped. Petals are all a little bit different, right? And then we, I bet we could fit two in here. Let's see if we can fit two. If not, oh well, they can overlap. Okay. So, so far we've done about three things. Master painters always sketch stuff out okay some people freehand the majority of us do not there is no shame in doing this okay everyone thinks oh i can't paint well if you if you know the hacks and you know the tools you absolutely can okay they need to overlap a bit no big deal okay this one's a little skinnier cool skinny pedal some are skinny some are fat all right if you've got a little edge over here you can stick one in here, little little belly of the next one, or not. You're painting, okay? All right, so do you see how now you've created this nice shape? You have this guideline out here to guide you. Okay, that's how far that goes. You can even, if this helps you, make another circle 
about halfway through to show you where the fat part should be. If that helps you, okay? Do what helps you. Okay, so now we've got our main petals. That's kind of the first step. Now we're gonna do petals that are behind these. All right, so we're gonna start with this main one here and let's go to the right. Okay, so with a sunflower, there's always layers of petals. That paint's not totally dry, you can just tell. Okay, and your petals can have a little, have a little fun with your petals. They can go different ways. They can, they can curve this way and curve that way, but you wanna have this second layer of petals in between each of your main ones. Right, it can be back here. And then we'll do on, whoops, look at that. See, not quite dry. That's okay, we're gonna cover it up. If you make a thumbprint, it's fine. We're gonna take care of it, we're gonna cover it up. Okay. Now, I will tell you something about red paint. Let's do one over here. Red paint is known for being splotchy and uneven in its transparency. And you can kind of see that on the canvas here. So if you're noticing that as your paint is drying, you can go back and cover it up again, okay? And I might do just that. I might wait till the end. Haven't decided yet. It's not gonna mess anything up if you wanna do that. Okay, so if you want a little extra out here, add a little bit of extra. Okay, you'll notice if you've ever painted a room red, you'll notice this, that it's just red paint requires multiple coats. Um, it's annoying if you're painting in your house, but it's just the way the color works. I don't know just how red does. So I probably should have done a thicker coat, but that's okay. Okay, so you got the idea. All right, you can add more red later, um, should you so desire. All right, so our next step is, we've got our outline, we've got our petals. What we wanna do now is, let me pick the right brush. Get like a, oh my gosh, my brushes are so old. I've had these brushes since college. You want to get a brush. I'm like measuring this next to my finger. Uh, maybe half the size of your finger, depending on how big your canvas is. If your canvas is huge, don't get a tiny brush. Get one a little bit bigger. Okay, I think I'm going to use this one. I just tend towards tinier brushes. And I want you to get your brown. Okay, so dab your brown. Get it nice and goopy in there. Okay, because what we're going to do now, we're just laying down the base. All right, we're still laying down the base. So in theory, you cannot mess this up. We're gonna put things over this, lots of layers over this. So just rough it out, all right? Rough out this middle of the sunflower, which is called the seed pod, by the way. These are where the seeds go. And if it's showing through a little bit, that's okay. If it's showing through a lot, you might have to do multiple coats. That just means you have thinner paint um, and that's okay. The expensive professional stuff is like the really thick stuff, depending on what kind you get. Um, and it, I don't spend the money for practice, you know. Um, you can get a little like four ounce tube of paint and it's like 20 bucks and it's just like, really? So go to your, you know, Michaels or Walmart and get the student grade stuff. It works just fine. It'll get the job done and you'll still end up with a good end result. It's okay, okay? So it might be showing through a little bit, that's okay. Um, the trick is if it's showing through a lot, you can pause, do a layer of white instead, and then put your color over it. Um, almost like you were printing on dark paper, you know, like you're trying to print white 
on dark paper. It's just harder, all right? So there's that, okay? And then I'm going to mix, and I'll hold this up so you can see it. I'm gonna take my brown and my black, and I'm gonna mix a little bit darker brown here. Because around the edge, I want, I don't really use a palette knife so much. I just use paint. Around the edge, I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna mix up some nice darker brown. Sand brush. Go around the edge here a little bit darker. And just kind of blend it in. That's the beautiful thing about is you can blend it in. See how that blends? And just make it keep with the circle. And there you go. Okay. All right, so that's the base of your seed pod, okay? Um, you got your brown and your dark brown, you're just gonna kind of blend them together, okay? That's easy enough, right? If you guys have questions, uh, let me know. I can see the screen here. Okay, so next, let's see, what do I want, what do I want? I might want something a little skinnier. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed to show you guys my brushes. Let's do, let's do this one. A little bit of a point might help you here. Um, this one I think used to be pointed and my children have ruined it over COVID. So it just is what it is. Okay, so next step is we're gonna start with these back pedals here behind the main pedals, all right? So first we're gonna start with just straight yellow, straight yellow right out of the bottle. Don't have to mix it, it's a beautiful thing, okay? If you wanna hold your canvas and tilt it, awesome. I'm gonna start with this one right here in the middle. And do not worry if this is a little translucent and see-through and like, oh my gosh, I'm already messing this up. You're not, we're gonna go over this a few times, okay? So don't worry. Just get the base outline, trace your chalk marks. That's all you gotta do. Trace your chalk marks. And I want you to go all the way down to here. And your brown might be still a little bit wet. So you know what? Pause for a second. Stick your paint brush in the paint. We're gonna hair dry this for a second. Hold on. Hair dryer is my new hack. Betsy's writing. I love that. What are you writing about? What's your topic? Betsy's a writer and I'm an artist and we're like best friends. Um, we do creative things and then we just hang out. Okay, so you don't have to have this all the way dry, just kind of like a little bit dry so your paint isn't totally mashing together. Okay. Back to our yellow. Because honestly, like you can paint and hit the brown here and like overlap, and it's not gonna matter right now because we're gonna go over the brown again. So I don't want you to worry about like being perfect. Okay? We're just getting the shapes. Painting is all about shapes. 
And the more you just follow the shapes and stop trying to think with your brain um, and trust that the shapes will hold true, um, then paintings will turn out just fine. I've learned this a thousand times. Okay. So remember, we're just doing the back uh, layer of petals, okay? So you want to be going in between these little lines. Okay. This is bothering me, but I'm on an angle here, so I'm just going to hold it. I do not have the professional setup, but I don't care. Because my easel is ginormous. And I really want to paint something that feels approachable. <laughs> Beginners do not want to start with a giant easel. Like, just give me a freaking sketchbook, right? Okay? So, we're keeping it loose. That's why I picked something easy. Because if you guys want to go back and watch this later and actually do it, you'll be able to. And then, maybe one of these days, we'll do like an online Zoom class or something because that would be fun. Okay, so we got that one. Let's do this up here, because don't forget, you have a petal up here. And if you're eyeballing it, it's fine. Nothing wrong with eyeballing. Just make sure you get your little triangle spaces in here. Dee, 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 dee. Um, I'm a fan of gloppy paints. Because acrylics, in particular, by the way, that's what I'm using, acrylics, don't get tempera. They get real dry and chalky real fast. Don't get oils, because they never dry, unless you just like oil paintings. Um, I always get acrylics. They're affordable. They're plentiful. They come in like a thousand colors. And you can get them pretty much anywhere. Even if it's like the t-shirt paint aisle at Walmart. for like a dollar. Oops, see, my brown is bleeding through. That is okay, no big deal. Um, I'm gonna take a little Nebuchadnezzar. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to read Betsy's novel. Fantastic. Okay. All right, so when this dries a little bit more, I'll come back over it, but for now, it's fine. Again, we're going to do layers here, so this is not a crisis. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. All right. This way. I really wish we had music, because I love to paint to music. Um, but right now we just have ocean sounds, because if you're just joining, um, royalty-free music is not great. <laughs> So I have been informed, and Facebook Music Library is actually worse. So, if you guys have questions, hit me up because I just have room to talk and teach, okay? Um, as you are doing your strokes, wow, I'm really seeing like the cheapness of my paint for your information. This is the super cheap stuff. It's working, but you can see how transparent it is, okay? And that's okay. We're gonna get over it. And we're gonna go over it many a time, so no worries. We're just getting the shapes. Okay, and we got one more down here. At the bottom, remember we're doing back petals first. Just get the shape, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, all right, so it looks a little wonky right now because these shapes are funky, but it's going to shape up. Don't worry. All right, so we have our shapes. Yay, good job. Good job. All right, now we're gonna do the next trick. For my next trick, you're gonna take your a little bit of your yellow, mostly yellow here. When you're mixing colors, the darker color will always overpower. So start with more light and then you can add, okay? We're gonna take a little bit of orange. Okay. Anybody else set alarms for their kids at night and forget to turn them off? 
See how this turns turn into like crazy orange or yellow. All right, so now we kind of have like a yellowy orange. It's not as dark as that, but it's not as light as this. So what we're gonna do now, and this is why it's good that your paint is probably still wet, is we are going to, oh, that's a lot. Scrape it off if it's too much. We're gonna start, pick a petal, doesn't matter. Pick a petal, any petal. And we're gonna start at the bottom. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add orange to create some depth and dimension. Darker things, or, mm, yeah, I'll say it that way. Darker things will move back in space. Lighter things will come forward. So if you're painting something that's behind something else, you want it to be a little bit darker in color so that it visually recedes, if that makes sense, okay? You just wanna pull this up, not all the way, but like, you know, through this skinny space and a little bit up into here. All right, and you can just, it's okay because these are the behind petals. Your brighter colors, your whites, will come forward instantly. So we'll use those on these uh, forward petals. All right, and so you just pull it up into these, go around your edges, and then come up a little bit through the middle. Um, another background color you could use would be like a nice blue. This is like on fire. So if you're not feeling this fire color, your background color could be like a nice blue, turquoise, or gray that will offset all these like kind of warm, hot colors. All right, and like if you're, see how my shapes are getting off? It's okay. We're just creating some depth and dimension. Go around the outsides here. Redefine your shapes a little bit. Remember, you're going over this a second time now, so you can do a little more definition. We'll do more definition later, so don't worry. Just give it a little more definition than you had before. And see how there's more coverage now? Again, don't worry about touching your brown. We're gonna go over the brown again. So it's all good. All right. If you end up making the whole thing orange, again, not a big deal. All right. And layering. And layering actually has its benefits because it's gonna create some light effects that you might not puff paint. Yes, I do remember puff paint. Now I want to paint a t-shirt. I had a puff paint birthday party when I was in fifth grade. It was puff paint t-shirts and it was also puff paint. Um, this was the eighties, early nineties. So it was puff paint, like side t-shirt. Um, not the scrunchies, but like they were plastic and round and then they had like the bar through the middle and you would like put your t-shirt in one side and out the other and it would like hold your t-shirt. We definitely um, bedazzled those. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that was good times. Gemstones and puff paint. Pretty sure I made mine a unicorn too. I don't remember. Yes, snowmen, I love it. Oh man, and you could get like the, um, not this like the gemstones and the sequins, but you could get like the little tiny mirrors and you could like put like the mirrors on it. Stirrup pants, hell yes. Those came back for a time, what happened? All right, so as we reminisce about the 80s, <laughs> Keep painting your petals 
And this one is mostly orange, that's okay. This is okay, all right? We're learning and we're making mistakes and this is fine. And I don't even think I made a mistake because we can go over this. Um, and the point here is that we are creating depth, okay? Um, so this is good. And if you wanted to go in like with super orange, like just orange down here at the bottom, you could. I'm gonna wait because it's a little bit wet. And I'm gonna let that dry for a minute before I go next level on my dimension. So it's good to kind of skip around so that your, um, your painting can dry as you work. And then you won't get mad at it and be like, what the hell? I can't make this mix. When all it does is just really need to dry for a hot second. Okay, and in the spirit of that, I'm gonna do the hair dryer again. Oops, wrong button. Okay, that probably seems like it did nothing. And it might have done nothing, but that's okay. Um, okay, so now we're gonna do the front petals. We're gonna mix just our yellow with some of our white. Okay, so grab your yellow and pick another spot on your palette or whatever. And then you're gonna grab some white and really you don't even have to mix this because I'm gonna show you a neat little trick. Okay, just stick them together like this, put it on your brush and let's watch this magic. Watch, I'll totally like fuck it up and then <laughs> you'd be like, what? But in general, this should work. All right, so it'll mix on your page and you don't have to worry about it and that like extra little streakiness that you're gonna get is so worth it. Plus I just saved you time. All right, so now we're gonna do the front petals. And see how these just like instantly pop forward because they're brighter and lighter? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. And look how nice that white is doing for me, making this less transparent. have a skinnier brush and you want to use a skinnier brush you totally can I probably should have but we're just gonna roll with it let the streakiness work in your favor because those little petal lines are in there anyways so let them be there can bump up against that a little bit, that's fine. The wonderful thing about nature, any kind of nature paintings that you're doing is that nature is very forgiving. Um, you do not have to have exact perfect lines, which I just, find is much more enjoyable when you're not worried about edges and exactness a little freedom from the graphic design world just kind of kick back and flow okay how are you guys doing over there is that Harper Harper are you watching are you painting with me If you're not, you should. All right. Look how this is doing. Whoops, look at that. Brown is still wet. Son of a gun. Oh, that's not Harper, okay. I thought it was. Oh, you're not painting with me. That was your answer. All right, well, next time we'll paint together, okay? 
Okay. This can get kind of meditative if you let it. Zone out. Enjoy the process. Mm, see that nice little white at the top there? That's kind of a nice highlight just from not mixing. So if you don't have to mix, don't mix. It's fun to mix on the canvas. Well, that's how I do it anyways. Um, I have palette brushes or palette knives, but I don't use them very often. Unless I need a specific color. Okay. All right, so now we've got, look how nice that's doing. And even if you do get some brown in there, that's kind of nice, it's like a little shadow. Okay, all right, so now we've got like the front petals going on, all right? Um, and what I will probably do is go back to these back ones and do another coat of yellow. I'm gonna let all this dry for a minute. So, let's take a little break from those while that dries. And I'm gonna take, we're gonna go back to the middle here. So let me just scoot this over a little bit so you guys can see. Um, is anybody playing along? Does anybody have any questions so far about what I'm doing? This is taking way longer than I expected, but that's fine. Because what else are we doing on a Friday night? Nothing. All right, so you want to take your yellow ochre, which is this mustard color. It literally looks like mustard, okay? And all we're going to do, get like... Uh, what is this, like a medium brush? Medium-ish. Okay, get some paint on there. And I gotta kinda hold this. But we're just gonna tap. Okay, tap in the center. Don't go all the way to the edges, kind of make a ring here. And again, you're just setting up a base. It doesn't have to be solid kind of get it in there okay a little texture here is what we're aiming for all right you can kind of spread out the edges so it blends a little bit but again no hard fast rules okay all right now we're gonna take uh, I'm gonna use the same brush because why not we're gonna take a little bit of brown right here and a little bit of orange. And we're gonna mix those. So we're kind of making like a reddish, brownish. Mm, yeah. Almost like a rust color. And you don't need much. You know, that's plenty. I didn't make it, I didn't make a lot. And we wanna go, this is just another blending. Okay, so we wanna blend kind of um, a middle ring, if you will, right here. Kind of blend in a little bit, blend out a little bit. Change your brush angle so they don't all look identical. It's not going to stay like this. This is just, again, a base. Okay. Um, and then you can take, I'm going to use the same brush because I'm lazy. And I just find it easier for blending. Um, this black brown that we kind of made earlier. I'm gonna dab back into that because I want to do a little bit more on the edge here just in terms of texture. And it's gonna cover up all those little overlaps I made. Takes care of that. And I can just kind of, that's kind of a lot of black. So I might blend that in a little bit more. Okay, and I might go back to, I might rinse that off. Oh, do I have a brush that's in the middle size? 
I kind of don't, so I'll just rinse that one off. I have multiple brushes of the same size, if you can. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my little brown mixture here, brown and orange. Got a little too much black. I feel like it's too much. I'm just gonna kind of spread this out. And like, just do what your heart is telling you to. We measure paint by their hearts. Don't measure it by the rules. Okay. All right, so all we're trying to do is create a texture base here um, in our seed pod. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our background petals here because you can see we can hardly see them compared to all the other awesomeness going on. So, is that what I want? Is that the brush I want? I'm deciding on my brush. I think I want this one. Get kind of a medium sized brush. Whatever you did the back petals with, because we're gonna hit those again. All right, so we're gonna go back to our yellow and orange mixture, but this time we're gonna do a lot more yellow because they're almost disappearing. And while we want them to blend, this was this yellow is also really transparent. But we just wanna highlight them a little bit more. And you can even add a little bit of white, a little bit of white, if you want to. Because we do want to see them. The idea is to create a little bit of contrast, not massive contrast, because then they just disappear. Okay, so go back on these petals. And this is still pretty different in contrast. I'm just gonna do a little bit down here, most of it up here. I still want them to fade back. And use your judgment. If it's still too dark for you, go lighter. I think this is still too dark for me, so I want a little more yellow. Let's see if you can see my little mixture here. And I want a little more white. I don't want it as bright as the front, but they're still fading back too much. And I think it's because my yellow is so transparent. So let's try this. That's better. I want them to look behind, but not like they're part of a different flower. Just pull it down through the middle here. And I probably need a skinnier brush, but this is fine for now. I've already committed. All right, through the middle. If you have little marks like this, not a big deal. All right, this one you can barely freaking see this thing. If you're just joining us, welcome. We're painting sunflowers. Oh, here's another trick. If your paint is feeling like sticky or like too thick, I know it sounds kind of gross, but it can get that way. Um, just kind of like dip your paint in water a little bit and add it to like you're mixing paint and it'll kind of loosen it up. It helps the fluidity of it, which also will increase your transparency. So if you're dealing with a transparent paint, like I am already, just be aware that it will thin it out, make it easier to make strokes, but can also make it more see-through, that makes sense. Okay. All right, these are looking better. All right. Get this guy up here. And again, overlap is not a crisis. All the way down. So 
you're painting along, you're doing great. If you're not painting along, you're also doing great. Because <laughs> it's Friday and you made it. And what a week. Okay. So this is coming together. Oops, I totally missed this like super red corner over here. Let's go back and fix that. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, all right, what's this one? Now, again, turn your canvas if it makes it easier for you. By all means. Ease is the name of the game. So do it. Right. Now that's getting a little, a little too light. So just add a little orange, tone it down a little bit. Squeeze through here. Blend. Chances are good. This is still kind of wet down here. Awesome. Find. Let them fade away, especially at the base. Okay, so now you can start to see how this is shaping up, how we're getting there, how those little strokes and translucent marks are actually working in your favor. Okay, um, all right, let's see. What is our next step? Okay, so now you've brightened up the back a little bit. If your front layers are feeling a little too transparent, we can add just a little bit of just yellow. Just yellow, I didn't mix with anything. And add a little. Every little layer you add just adds a bit of depth, a bit more coverage. This one I'm going a little bit spotty with just cause, not spotty, but streaky. I just wanna add yellow and brightness without being overpowering but you can see it still stands out from the back and I actually need more yellow <laughs> okay so this layer on the front is just yellow just yellow, I didn't mix it with anything. And I'm just kind of doing another coat. And now it's working in my favor because it is transparent. And so I can see, even though I'm covering it up a little bit, I can still see all the work I've done behind it. And that's actually very satisfying. <laughs> so you're not just covering up all your work, you're layering it on very intentionally. And this adds just more depth. And if you wanna leave the edges alone, that's fine. Kind of come up through the middle here. You kind of like define this edge, define an edge that needs defining. This just needs another coat because it's thin. And it does start to come to life a little bit at a time. You see that? I didn't wait till the red was dry down here, or the yellow was dry, before putting on another coat. And when you do that, I'm being, I'm being hasty. 
in my teaching. Um, it will pull up the layers below it as it's doing right now. Ah! And it'll expose the background. <laughs> so if that's happening, that's why. So just walk away, let it dry, and then come back. I'm going to keep going because we're live. But just so you know, that's why that happens. Not a crisis, totally fixable. Okay. Um, all right, now I want to do this like, since this is wet, since we just did yellow on top, I wanna do a little more of this yellow orange mixture right here. And we're gonna add a little accent on the front here. On the front petals, this first row, I think I want a smaller brush. I'm giving in. I need a smaller brush. Um, what do I have in here? No, I don't want that one. My children have stolen all of my small brushes. Okay, this will work. I love that they're painting, but I've lost all my supplies. Okay. <laughs> it's my own fault. I said yes. So, with your little bit smaller brush and your yellow and orange mixture right here, what we want to do is we want to, I'll use this one because I can tell that it's still wet, streak up a little bit. From the bottom, we're just gonna start to give this a little more definition, okay? We've gone over everything twice, and now we wanna add a little detail. This can be a lot, it can be a little, but generally, if you were to look at a flower, there is kind of, there's these little shadows where there's just folds, where it gets closer to the seed pod, um, and where there's just darker areas that you can accent with, and I could probably go darker here because I can tell you guys can't really see this on screen. You need some accents. And this will just give this more dimension, more depth, and makes it more interesting to look at. It's starting to look more realistic. Okay, I know we're far from that, but it's giving the, this is called impressionist um, work, and it gives the impression of what you're actually looking at. It gives the eye and the brain the impression of what is really there, okay? So you can do those streaks up from the middle um, kind of an orange and yellow mix on the front petals. Okay. Um, so now we're getting close. There's still some steps, but we're getting close. Okay. I'm going to rinse out that brush because I want that brush again. I'm going to take white and yellow. So a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. Let me turn this so you can see it. Right up here. Okay, so we're looking like a pale yellow now. And what we're gonna do, since our front petals are still kind of wet, this is a good time. I want kind of a, th a thin line, but a thin line that blends. So you might have to practice this a little bit. Um, I wanna define these front petals. Okay, so we're going to define the space here and these outer edges with just like a highlight. And see how it's not like super white, but it's light enough that it defines it. And I should probably use a thinner brush, but we're just going to go with it. Because if you didn't pick a thinner brush, I want to show you how to work with it. Okay, so just... Go with what is happening. You don't even have to go all the way to the edges. And if you, if your brush is splayed, like mine, because I've had this since college, if you, let me get my camera here, um, if it's splayed out like that, and you're like, oh, I can't get a hard line, stick it in the paint and kind of roll it like this, and it will, you can also put it in water, but this is a really easy way to just kind of um, get those fibers together and then you've got a smoother um, point to work with. And if you want to put this flat, because it's easier, then do that. 
Um, I probably would if I wasn't showing you guys. So, you're just defining these lines. You're creating more contrast against the petals behind it. And you can go all the way down if you want to. And you can go all the way up if you want to. Do a little bit and then step back and look at it. See if you like it. If you don't like it, why not? And then change it. Okay, commitment to self before next painting class is to get new freaking brushes. Oh my gosh. I did not test these ahead of time because <laughs> I've had these brushes for 20 years. And they've just been fine. Before COVID. Before my children got a hold of them. Um, okay, and then add some water. If you need to, that'll smooth this out too. I'm just running into like bumpy chunky lines here. There we go. And you can blend this point in if you want to. They don't have to be hard lines. Blend, blend, blend. Blend is your friend. Okay. See how we're getting some definition here? If you're not getting the line that you want, get more paint or get more water and it will smooth things out for you and you'll just have to play with it and test it or get a different brush. Just try something different because chances are good it's not you, it's your tool. Okay, I like to kind of blend these in just a smidge more. I'm a blender. Okay, I got one more. And then we'll move on to the next step. This last one, I just gotta turn it. Okay. And if you're not getting a good point on these petals, it's fine. Petals aren't really pointy anyways. They look pointy, but usually they're not. Sometimes they are. To make a point, get a thinner brush. If you're cool with a round, and then go forth. Okay, I actually picked the worst brush. <laughs> this is the worst brush. It's like I'm painting with a broom. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Good grief. Okay, so we've done several layers on that those top petals. So we're gonna take that, a break from that, and we're gonna go back to this little seed pod, okay? Um, and now I actually do wanna find a good brush because we're gonna do some dabbing. Dabby, dab, dab. Let me find my dabbing brush I did earlier. Is it this one? I think this one will work. Um, if you are brush hunting, brushes for, I would get brushes for, um, there are brushes for acrylics there are brushes for um, oils. Then there are brushes that do both. I would suggest getting ones that do both because they tend to be a little bit softer. Oil brushes are always softer. Um, I don't know why, but they just are. <laughs> so if you get a brush that can do acrylic and oil, they will be softer. They won't be super expensive, but they'll be softer. If you get just acrylic brushes, they, I mean, again, these are like, gosh, these are 20 years old. These are bristly, these were cheap. These were probably like a pack of 10 for like 10 bucks, okay? These will actually start to function like a broom because they will dry out. Very hard to paint with, unless you have like no care for detail. Um, these are softer. I can't even read the brand. These are gallery brand. These are, I'm embarrassed. Um, I don't know. I will research for you and, and report back. Anyways, brushes that can do acrylic and oil will have more give to them and not be so bristly and like rough. These are really soft. Okay, 
So I want you to go back to your yellow ochre, this mustard color, okay? Get your kind of medium brush. And it needs to be a little bit narrow like this because I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna lift this up so you can see and try and hold it. Um, actually, I'm gonna turn this this way because we want, we're gonna go, this is, we're gonna start making seeds in our seed pad. And we're gonna be going in kind of like a radial motion. So tilt your canvas in a way that supports however your brain <laughs> can understand like dabbing um, in, in like a fan shape, if that makes sense. I'm not even in the screen here, okay? So this will make sense once I start to do it. So we're gonna just do this and it's gonna be sort of random, but we're fanning out this way, if that makes sense, okay? And you're gonna kinda of use the side of your brush to make these. They don't need to be even, and you don't want them to be solid, right? Because we're creating an impression, we're creating a texture. And we want to make them a little bit random out here. But if I were to try and do it down here, I think I would just jack it up. So I'm working from this angle because it makes sense to me. You do not have to work from this angle. Pick an angle that makes sense to you. It's the wonderful thing about art. There are no rules. You do it how it works for you. Okay, and then you kind of it's hard to blend, but you're gonna kind of fade these out because we're gonna add another color here, okay? All right. So now we're gonna take a little of the ochre and a little of the white. And I just blend it right here because we don't care. I just find an empty space on the palette and I go nuts. I want it to be a little bit lighter than that. I wanted to stand out a little bit because this, we're actually gonna dab over it and it's gonna create some depth. Okay, remember how we talked about lights and darks? This is gonna create, oops, I just stuck my hand in paint. Uh, we're gonna do fewer of these, but we're gonna go over this in the same manner, in the same direction. It's just gonna create little highlights. And the spaces where you don't have one is gonna create low lights. And it sounds like I'm talking about dyeing your hair. Um, you can concentrate them more towards the center, but this just creates the illusion of light hitting the seed pod in a different way, okay? If you can trust this process, when you turn it the right way, it will look right, okay? Um, hard to mess up, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna go darker. So we're gonna take black and brown. We're gonna make this nice kind of, well, we've already started to make it in a number of ways, but kind of a chocolatey color. If you already got a chocolatey color, awesome. You are ready to go. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of black to the brown that I have, just to darken it a little bit, just for contrast here. I'm going to turn this again. I'm going to add this in here. Add some up here. A little denser at the top. I'm going to, oh, I could probably do bigger dabs. Fade into part here. So you're almost going the opposite direction here. You're doing these a little bit denser at the top and then you're fading out in dot formation into these lower seeds. Okay. All right. 
All right, how are you guys feeling? All right, we're down to the last final steps. Um, we want to do, we're gonna do one more thing and then we're going to hair dry this again. And then we'll finish it up. Okay, so I want to mix orange and brown again in this kind of very Thanksgiving-y colors. Harper's good. Okay, good. Harper, what should we paint next? Not today, but like next time, maybe in a couple weeks. Okay, so I'm going to take this kind of orange and brown color and we're going to dab again. And we're going to dab. Let me turn this again because it makes sense for my brain. We're going to dab in the middle here and just kind of cross the bridge that we created. And I put a couple dark dabs down here. Harper wants to draw a cat. Awesome. Love it. I am totally taking suggestions. Do a fun cat next time. Okay. So that just helps us kind of cross our color bridge here. We're, we're blending the light into the dark. We pick a mid-tone to make that happen. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, you could be done right now. We're gonna add a little bit more. So if you wanna stick around, we're gonna add more. But first we're gonna take a little hair dryer break so this can dry. Um, Cause the next step we don't actually want to mix colors. So if you need a potty break, if you need to go grab a drink, if you need to have a snack, um, go do that while I do this for a couple minutes and then we'll come back and finish up. My mom does that for me. <laughs> of course she does. All right, um, let's just see how dry this is. I think this is pretty dry. Again, the beautiful thing about acrylics is they will dry fast if you need them to. Okay, so if you've gotten this far and you want to be done, you can be done. You've done a great job. Um, what we're gonna do is add some highlights and some kind of pop arty things that will make your painting stand out on a totally different level. So they're just some fun accents that you can add um, to just kind of set it off and, and do something else with it. So totally optional. Um, but we're gonna keep going because we can. I think, how long has this podcast gone on for? Oh, I think we have about 15 minutes, so we need to hustle before um, Facebook live stream like totally cuts me off. I think I have an hour and a half. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so take your turquoise. If you don't have turquoise, mix blue and green and add some white, okay? Um, we're gonna use that in a minute. Take your red, just your straight red. All right, get a little bit there, and we're gonna add some red to the seed pod, kind of around like the mid circle here, almost where we put that brown. And this just adds visual interest. I'm gonna go fast for the purposes of time here. Get some nice dabs in there. These are kind of 
wimpy and thin. So this just adds a little bit of drama, a little bit of excitement. And it brings in the background a little bit. Okay, so that's something you can do. Um, let's see, is there any more red I want to add? I don't think so. I think we're done with red. But this, this is a good way to like tie in your background, um, just kind of in a fun way. All right. So now, this is the part that I am most excited about is this turquoise. I've been waiting this whole painting just to use the turquoise. Isn't that silly? Okay, so we're gonna add turquoise, which again, you can just get turquoise in a tube like this, or you can mix blue and green and a little bit of white. I didn't have the right blue and green, so I just had the tube, okay. So same brush, rinse it off nice and clean, or same size. We're gonna add some turquoise to the yellow part, let me skew my paint out of the way, the yellow part of the seed pod. Just a few, just for a little drama, and you'll see why in a second. Because, I don't know, I'm too even. But just a little for fun here. Eh, it's a little too uniform, but that's okay. Because now, um, you know what, I'm gonna add a few more. Hold on, I'm gonna add a few more out here. Again, guys, there's no wrong way to do this. Just have fun with it, see what happens. The great thing about paint, I always say this about like rooms that you're gonna paint. These are really wonky um, seeds here. I've done a crap ass job. <laughs> Now I feel rushed because of the time constraints. Um, you can paint over it, okay? If you really jack it up, you can paint over it. Um, okay, so the last thing we're gonna do, this is the final step. We're gonna outline our petals with this teal color. Why? Because it's, a, it's an accent, it's a color theory thing, it's gonna help it to stand out, it's gonna be expressive. Um, so you can, you can do a couple things, you can exaggerate, um, your shape a little bit if you want to. Like you can go wide, you can bring it in thin, you can use a thinner brush if you want to. Thinner brush might be good. This is a little bit wide, but it doesn't matter. But this creates just a different little sense of, it's almost like pop arty, you know? That's a really thick line. It's not what I had in mind, but that's okay. We're just gonna keep on going. And it's kind of a thick paint. I want something thinner. I want it thinner. I want it to flow a little bit better. It's not flowing the way I was wanting. All right. So we're flowing with the blue. And to kind of like tie this in, you can do like little blue streaks in here. It's thick, fine. If it thins out, also fine. Exaggerate your shapes. Whoops. All right, painting sideways is not the way to go. Let me straighten this out a little bit. We'll finish up here. There we go. That's better. And this is just for fun, right? This is all for fun. This should be relaxing, even if it doesn't turn out. And again, turn your painting. Look, I just, I just did that. Mm, that's okay. It's gonna be part of the painting now. Turn your canvas so that it serves you. Be smarter than the canvas. Don't let it own you. The paint does not own you. The paint brushes do not own you. Look at this. I'm just making a huge mess. It is okay. All right, get some streaks in there. I have a sneaky suspicion. This is totally messing it up for me. 
but I don't care. Yours might look really amazing. And this might look really amazing from far away. <laughs> uh, these are definitely too thick, but that's okay. The color is still super fun. And if at the end of this, you absolutely do not like what you've made, let it dry and cover it up with white and paint something else. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing about paint. You can cover up a room, you can change it, if you don't like it, paint over it. It's all gravy. All right, and I'm gonna outline the back petals as well because they need to stand out just a smidge. Disappearing completely. These lines don't have to be exact. They can be more expressive, even more expressive than I'm doing. Let them just kind of flow. Do a little, can even do a few little add blue accents back here. So another little color theory lesson is blue colors or cool colors will recede, as in they will kind of fade more into the background. Brighter colors will come forward, okay? So just something to think about as you are um, doing this. All right, so aside from my blue outlines being way too thick, this is our simple sunflower. This is something you can easily do at home this is something that you can easily do um, with different colors. Play with different colors. Mix up the palettes. Make it crazy and fun. Um, do like yellow and purple or do make the background blue. Outline in green. Um, this is, you can use these steps and just swap out the colors and see what happens. You'll get something different every time and it'll be amazing no matter what, but it's a really simple way to create something that um, is easy to do and beginner friendly, simple colors you can get anywhere and doesn't require a whole lot of work. One last thing, I'll show you guys a trick. For these little chalk marks that you might see like hanging out on your painting and you're like, oh, how do I get rid of that? Get a little bit of water on a clean brush. Okay, there's no paint, just a little bit of water and this is why I like little kid chalk, because you can just wash them right away. Look at that, they're gone. See that? So you can just wash away the little chalk marks that you made, which is why I like to use chalk, because you can clean it up real easy, and they're gone, and you're done. And then, don't forget, to sign it. I don't have a teeny brush, but I'll just do this one. Don't forget to sign it when you're done. All right, thank you guys for watching. Let me know how you go. We will do this again, just because I had fun with it. Um, have an amazing weekend and uh, share with me your pictures. Either tag me on Instagram or Facebook or shoot me an email, however you want to go. Um, I will talk to you next time and thanks for being here. Have an amazing weekend. Bye!